guys, welcome back to my modeling dinosaur series. This is- wait, hold on, where am I? Where's my voice filter? <coughs> this isn't the short form vertical platform I'm normally on. Odd. Anyways, the dinosaur getting modeled in this video is the Parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus. The first thing I like to do when starting a blender model is sketch out what I want the dinosaur to look like. For the sketch, I'm referencing Scott Hartman's Parasaurolophus skeletal. In areas where I'm not quite sure about the anatomy, I draw out simple bones and then give them another pass to get the flesh shapes right. You can see me doing this with the legs. In areas where I'm not happy with the proportions, I add notes so I know exactly what I want to fix later. The Parasaurolophus was an herbivore that lived between 76 to 70 million years ago. It was about 33 feet long and about 15 feet tall. The Parasaurolophus is best known from its distinctive crest at the back of its head. When I'm happy with the sketch, I take a cube, and in profile view, I extrude it along the outline of the Once the mesh is how I want it, I loop cut so I can make it a little more three-dimensional. I repeat how I extruded the body with the head. I make sure to leave a space where I can extrude the horn from, too. Phylogeny. What was the Parasaurolophus? The Parasaurolophus was a dinosaur. You knew that. But what kind of dinosaur? A bird hip dinosaur that was really good at eating. It had a crust on the top of its head, so it's in the family Lambiosaurinae. It's more related to itself than to Lambiosaurus, so it's in the tribe Parasaurolophini. After the head looks good from the side, I refined the overall shape, referencing a mounted Parasaurolophus skull. I switched to the top view to correct the dorsal shape of the rest of the model, as well as the head. The rest of the step is mostly just refining the animal, including making changes that I noted in the sketching stage. Parasaurolophus species. There are three definitive species of Parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus walkeri. Do you know how we pronounce something? Parasaurolophus cetacristatus. Cetacristatus? Parasaurolophus cetacristatus. And, oh no, not another one. And Parasaurolophus tubison. I'm focusing on modeling walkeri in this video. Parasaurolophus walkeri was the first Parasaurolophus species to be described. It had a long, relatively straight crest. Parasaurolophus tubican had a crest with a similar shape to Parasaurolophus walkeri, although the internal structure was a lot more complex. Sciocristatus was visually the odd one out of the group. Its crest was a lot shorter and more curved than the other species. It's been suggested that Sciocristatus was a result of sexual dimorphism in one of the other species and not its own species. Although I'm not convinced, Sciocristatus was found in a different part of the world and at a different time than the other two species. In a 2021 paper, Sciocristatus and Tubicin were found to be more closely related to each other than to, than to Walkeri. Then I extrude the legs. They go through the same rough shapes then refining steps as the body did. The crest. the crest. What was the crest used for? The current theory is that they were used to make sound. Adults could produce low frequencies that could travel long distances, while the babies could produce higher frequencies. It was also likely used for display in adults. Throughout history, there have been quite a few ideas about what the crest was used for, like a snorkel when dinosaurs were thought to be semi-aquatic. There have also been historical reconstructions that include a bit of skin connecting from the crest to the back of the neck. I don't think there's any evidence specifically for or against this, but most modern reconstructions don't include it. The next step is peeling the model. I start by marking seams down the middle of the model, around the arms and legs, around the crest, and around the back of the head. Then I just arrange the islands in the UV editor so that nothing is overlapping and nothing will be too pixelated once I get to the painting stage. The Parasaurolophus walkeri holotype specimen has a few pathologies that I think are interesting. It has a large divot in the vertebrae right over its shoulders. The left side of the upper jaw was injured, as well as the pelvis and a few ribs. All of these injuries show signs of healing and that the animal survived despite them. The next thing I do is texture paint. This is pretty straightforward, I just draw over the model. Historical, Historical art. art. The Parasaurolophus was found in 1920 and described two years later, so we've had a century to make art of this dinosaur. Early artwork of the Parasaurolophus depicts it as bipedal and in an upright position. Some examples of this are Charles Knight paintings that include the dinosaur, and also Disney's Fantasia. 
There was also a lot of early parasaurolophus loafers art with really skinny necks. Next is the armature. I screwed all the bones in the side view, then shifted the legs over. Batch renamed them to have the suffix dot L and symmetrized them. I just used automatic weights for this model and they worked well enough so I didn't have to do any weight painting. Then I just did some basic animation, added a camera, and lit the scene. And we're done! Now we have a little parasaurolophus model. Yippee! Should I say anything else? Thanks so much for watching! If you like dinosaurs or blunder, be sure to subscribe because I'm going to be doing more of these videos. If you have any suggestions for a dinosaur that you'd like to see me model next, be sure to leave them in the comments.